Good morning. Today is Monday, September 14th. For lunch today, we have chicken alfredo with pasta with California blend vegetable and garlic toast or Southwest chicken salad or pepperoni pizza or cheese pizza. And speaking of school lunch, both school lunch and breakfast is free for all students who are interested during the year 2020. If you've noticed, there's not even a place to put your lunch number in anymore because you don't need it. 2020's brought a lot of bad stuff so far. Here's a good one. Because there's been a little confusion on this point, we want to emphasize that you need to wear masks at all times when you're indoors. When you're outside, you can take it off if you're more than six feet from someone, but indoors, you've got to have it on the whole time. And while we're talking about masks anyway, remember that they need to cover both your mouth and your nose while you're wearing them. Otherwise, they won't keep us as safe as they could. And finally, please remember to visit your locker before your lunch or recess break, because you can't come back to your wing while recess or lunch is going on. If you need your coat or your lunch bag, make sure to grab it before you leave your wing. And nobody has a birthday today, so you're going to have to find your own reason to celebrate. So for me, canoeing is a way to get out in nature, to explore something I couldn't see otherwise. But in today's video, I'd like to introduce you to Wayne Valier, a member of the Ojibwe Nation, for whom it has a much deeper meaning. The birch bark canoe is, is the apex of our crafts, of our art forms in our region. Even our culture goes way back. We hunted, fished, gathered. Um, everything we did was out of the birch bark canoe. And in recent times, we've lost that culture. My name is Wayne Valier, and my native name is Minogizik, and it means good sky. My clan is Mukwa, which is the bear. Oh, yeah, this is a good one here. And there's approximately 150 canoe builders in the Midwest, but you're only going to find three Native American canoe builders, myself, my older brother and um, one of my teachers. My teacher, Marvin Defoe from Redcliffe, came to our community when I was probably uh, 11 years old, and he built a model birch bark canoe one summer for some teachers. And by the time I was 16, I built my first birch bark canoe. You don't go on your terms, on your time, you go on nature's time. And for an example, um, the birch, it only peels in, in mid-June to, er, to maybe early July. So there's a short window of opportunity to actually harvest the bark. The roots are there gotten usually later in the fall when the sap runs into the tree. Um, we usually harvest our cedar when the swamp is frozen because we go into the cedar swamp, um, there's no mosquitoes. It's easy to travel into the swamps to get the cedar for all the woodworking in the canoe. Um, the pitch runs in late August when it's the hottest part of the summer because we use white pine pitch to, with a concoction of deer tallow and crushed uh, hardwood coals. A friend of mine by the name of Tim Frandy, who is um, a doctor in folklore down here in Madison, he just graduated and he heard about these residencies. So we collaborated with the university and some other people and created this project. and we brought some of our at-risk kids from our community and also some of our kids that were not at risk in our community got them involved in the canoe project. This canoe here played a major role in Nishna in the lives of our ancestors. My grandmother, she challenged me as a, as a young boy. She said, your grandfathers are written throughout history, she said. They were very, very exceptional men. And she said, what I challenge you and your brothers, what I challenge you young men is that what will your great-grandchildren say about you someday? So I'd like to say that the work I've done and working in Anishinaabe Moan, saving our language and working in different areas, saving our culture, I'd like for my great-grandchildren to talk about their grandfather and say, hey, he, he did his job. He kept that alive for our people. He didn't have to go looking for it. It's, it's here for us. So a big takeaway I have from this video is the importance of looking to your roots, to your ancestors, to be able to find strength to get you through what you're doing right now. 
If you're native, this is pretty easy. Ho-Chunk, Nojibwa, you might look to canoe building, you might look to powwows, you might find a num any number of traditions that connect you to where you came from. Now, if like me, you're not native, that might be a bit of a harder task. But what type of things does your family do that you enjoy? What traditions do you have that you sort of say, okay, I'm centered, I'm good. So whatever your background, look to your traditions to help you find strength for now. All right, you take care.